The Component Robot Feeding Tool is a new feature to the recipe screen designed to help nutritionists who are formulating for AMS or robot herds, as well as nutritionists who are working with herds feeding a PMR or partially mixed ration with concentrate fed stepwise. We're starting from the recipe screen. Here I have a recipe already loaded. You can see here on the input side, I have my feed set up as a pellet or a concentrate here in the start, and then the rest of my feeds, which will make up my PMR. Here on the output side, I have the outputs that I want to see in the order that I like with the min max values set. To open the robot screen, from the recipe screen, navigate to Recipe Tools, Component Robot Feeding Tool. You will note that it says beta. We want you to try it out and give us feedback about what you like and what you would like to see different. As the screen opens, you will see this load notification detail telling you that the screen is setting up. If you have a diet that has some mixes in it, or even several le levels of mixes, mixes within mixes, you may find that this screen takes a little time to load. Once it has loaded, you will note that it is set up very similarly to the regular recipe screen. Here on the left side, you'll find the diet as it was in the main recipe screen. On the right side are the predicted results with your outputs as you had them in the main recipe screen. The color of the font is an indication of your min-max values that you have set up. Looking at this more closely, here on the left you have your recipe and the drop-down menus that are similar to what the main recipe screen looks like. This drop-down shows all of the available farm recipes. The cattle drop-down shows the different groups on the farm. And this third section, this is the window in which you would select the concentrate or component or ingredient that you are feeding in your robot as a component feed. In a robot situation, you are often feeding pellets, but this can also be used as a concentrate feeding tool. In this example, I'm going to select a feed called Robot Pellet T2. Below here, you see the components of the diet. This column shows the inputted rations and this area, the stepwise results. Right now, this information is not at all accurate. It will not be so until I set it up and click the simulation button. The component robot tool has two basic types of simulation. The one that people will be more familiar with using will be the concept of a base PMR plus concentrate. The program will simulate out steps of concentrate feeding. This is like our milk steps feature, but more sophisticated. It takes the base PMR and adds a certain amount of concentrate and you can adjust some settings to mimic what happens as you add more concentrate to a given ration. As a side note, you can adjust all diet ingredients from this screen. That includes the ability to bring in additional ingredients from the active feed banks using the click to add feature right here. Keep in mind that any change you make here will also be made in your main Recipe. If you find yourself tweaking the diet a lot from this robot screen, you may want to periodically close it out and save the current diet that you have just tweaked as a ration shot so that you have choices as you go along. To close this screen, use the X in the corner or the exit button. So let's go back to setting up for a base PMR and concentrate simulation. The information here on the left is the diet as it comes over from the recipe screen. You should enter an average diet. This can be the tank average or a modeling of a representative average animal of whatever group you're trying to model. In robot herds, typically you have a lot of information. However, you might not know the PMR intake for individual cows, but you should be able to know the PMR intake for the group. When you formulate, you want to get as close as possible to what is actually being taken in by the cow. If you know in monitoring the robots, that you have a lot of bulls that are full and the rest feed is high, then it would be an indication that you need to reduce the amount of robot pellet or concentrate you enter in the program because it's just not being consumed. So to orient you to the simulation setup, any cell that has a light yellow highlighted is able to be edited. 
and is able to be set up for simulation. In this cell, you set up how many steps, and you set up the step size. If you put in 12 here and 2 here, it means there are going to be 12 different levels of a pellet offered on top of the PMR, and that the step size will be 2. I'm going to put in a 0.9 step size for this example. This amount will build up from your base amount. So how do you establish what the base amount is? There's three different ways to do that. You can enter a number manually, or you can set your dry matter intake at X percent of milk production. So what this says is that you want to set the PMR at a balance for, let's say, 80% of the milk production of the modeled group. And it will calculate the dry matter intake, and it will start the step up from there. Or you can choose the inputted PMR. In that case, the program will take the pelleted amount in your formulation and subtract it from the total dry matter intake to get this number. When you choose that, the base PMR value will no longer be editable. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the manual entry method. I have set that to 22. So I've entered that as my base to start with, and then we're going to add the pellet stepwise up from there. The PMR substitution ratio is how much does the PMR intake decrease when you add one unit weight of concentrate. Studies usually publish a substitution ratio, typically between 0.8 to 1.1. It somewhat depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to stimulate a static group of animals, then use that typical range. If you're trying to simulate just adding concentrate on top of PMR without substitution, then you would set this value at zero. For concentrate refusal, you can enter a static value, or you can use values based off research by the Bach and Cabrera papers. Once you have your inputs, then click Simulate. This area here shows graphically the PMR feeding rate across, and then it shows how the concentrate increases stepwise. The results here show the concentrate offered, the concentrate refused, the concentrate intake. The offered comes from the steps. The refused is based on your concentrate refusal value here, and the actual intake is shown here. PMR intake is shown here, and total dry matter intake here. The ration outputs are shown are based on the template you have loaded in the recipe screen when you open this. The Outputs tab with this simulation is a graphic representation of the output selected from this dropdown. Here you are not limited to just the output shown in the loaded template, but can select any output modeled in the program. The second simulation in the screen gives you the opportunity to look at lactation curves and has applications outside of just robot or component feeding because we can simulate across lactation and can even do so for a normal TMR feeding situation. So let's go through the setup for this one. Here on the left, we have the same setup as before. You have your average diet entered here. This calculation uses the AMTS lactation curve model to try to model a group of cows. It also changes the fat and protein composition of the milk based on a typical lactation curve. Here, we need to enter peak milk, the days in milk at peak, and then the milk at 300 days in milk, or somewhere close to dry off. Enter those three things in, and then enter the concentrate refusal like before. On the right side, you have a few more options here. We have the concentration amount. This is the entry of the feed table from your robot system. There are two levels here. There's the days in milk. Then at different days in milk, you might have different milk levels. And so you're able to set up feed tables that correspond to those milk levels. Any differences you might have based on days in milk can be filled in. These values can be saved as a template for application to different groups on the same farm or as a template for other herds. Like all AMTS templates, these are stored in the documents AMTS, amts.cattle.pro folder, and in this case, robot concentrate templates.
these can be shared with other AMTS users. So you can see in this template that all animals from 0 to 20 days get 2 kilograms. After 20 days in milk, animals that are milking from 0 to 35 kilograms are going to again receive 2 kilograms. Animals milking from 35 to 40 will receive 4 kilograms. Animals milking from 40 to 50 will receive 6, and so on. Your next chart you can fill in for animals that are 100 days in lactation. So the animals will be getting the quantities between 20 and 100 that are listed in that chart under 20 days. As you can see, you can edit those numbers, the 20, 100, 210, and in this example, to match your own benchmarks. Once you populate this table, you can save it as a template. The next one to look at is intake limitations. These are settings in the system that will further control the intake based on output predictions. If it hits any of these parameters, the intake will be limited by the lowest number of any of these. You can see here that forage NDF, PEU NDF, and dry matter intake are all parameters that you can set. Fresh cow bias adjustment is the AMTS bias adjustment equation. In this case, it is checked on. In this tab is the lactation curve graph. And again, it is not actually valid until you run the simulation. This graph is what we can use to judge the overall effectiveness of the diet at meeting the needs of the animal. Before we move on to the lactation curve graph, there is one more area where you need to adjust the inputs before you click simulate. Down here, the other thing you need to enter is changes to the body condition score throughout the lactation. This is how we tell a model if she is mobilizing or accreting tissue. Here, in the early lactation phase, we're going to have this cow lose three quarters of a body condition score. You don't want to have that happen all at once, so I've set it to 0 0.15, 0 0.25, 0.25, and 0.1 across those 90 days. To reflect a loss, I entered negative values. What the program will do is it'll see how much energy is available in that body condition score loss. Then again here, at the end of the lactation, she's gaining condition score. Using these values, the program will calculate how much energy is available from the diet and what she will need to mobilize. For a cow group, you may have fairly large changes in body condition scores at the beginning, but for a heifer group, this may be lower, if at all. Once all the inputs are set, go ahead and click Simulate. Once it runs, you can then see the results at different stages of lactations for every 30 days. Here it shows the milk amounts, intakes, and the results are down here. One key thing to remember when you run this, because it might be an iterative process, is that you want to make sure that your lactation curve is close to what the herd is doing. In the average column over here, make sure that this number is close to what the average is for the herd. Make sure your concentrate intake is roughly correct. Compare this to what the robot is saying, because if it's not, it might mean that your concentrate table needs adjustment. Also check the PMR intake to make sure that it is correct based on what you know from the bunk. It will take a little tweaking to make sure the numbers say what you know the herd says. After you have it all set up, you can look at the results. Down here you can look at the inputted column, so this is the diet that you created and inputted. You can look at the results over the course of lactation every 30 days. You can look at the average, which is actually not what's represented over here in your inputted diet, but the results from your lactation curve estimate and your refusal amounts and your PMR in conjunction with the concentrate amount tables across the lactation. And you can see the PMR only, where it basically zeroes out your robot pellet and just shows you the results from just the PMR that you're feeding at the bunk. Then you can see the graphical representation of the lactation curve with the milk shown as the blue, the ME allowable milk shown in pink, concentrate intake in red, and PMR intake in green. So to summarize, the component robot feeding tool has two modeling methods. 
we have the base PMR plus concentrate method and the lactation curve method. To set up the base PMR and concentrate method, you want to start with a diet formulated for the average cow in the group, select the concentrate or pellet feed to step up, enter a step increment, enter the number of steps, determine the base PMR, and you have three selections for that, manual entry, predicted dry matter intake at X percent of milk production, and the inputted PMR. And when you do the inputted PMR, remember that's calculated for you from the inputs that you have in your diet. Then you want to select your concentrate refusal calculation type. And you have two choices with that. You can either enter a static value or you can take a value from the Bach and Cabrera research. Then you want to enter your PMR substitution ratio, which is the weight of the PMR intake decrease for every unit of concentrate increase. And finally, you want to click simulate to look at the results in the base PMR and concentrate model. The lactation curve, the setup is a little bit different. Start with a diet formulated for the average cow in the group again. Enter the peak milk amount. Enter days in milk at peak. Enter the milk weight at 300 days in milk, so that's close to dry off. Select a concentrate refusal calculation type, again, either your static value input or your Bach and Cabrera equation formula tabulation. Enter the concentrate amounts by days in milk and milk production in the concentrate chart, and these will come from your robot feed chart. Determine intake limitations. So these are dietary factors like forage NDF as a percent of body weight, physically effective UNDF as a percent of body weight, and total dry matter as a percent of predicted dry matter intake. Enter the body condition score changes across the lactation and click simulate. Give the component robot feeding tool a try. Remember, it's not only intended for robot herds. Component feeding herds will benefit using this to formulate. You can even use this to model all your herds and assess diets across lactations. We want you to play with it and give us feedback. As always, we have various resources created to help meet your nutritional formulation needs. On the web, you can find us at agmodelsystems.com, read our ruminations blog, also check out our other videos available on our video page. Always with questions or issues, please contact us at support at agmodelsystems.com.